What's up everyone, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and welcome to another Force of Will Deck Tech video. Today is a little special, it is the first of our Alice Origin Cluster Starter Deck Upgrade Guide. We are starting off with Faria here. I'm starting with Faria because I think she is a significantly less expensive deck to build, and um, she's also a lot of fun. I feel like Faria is a little underrated right now. She's still pretty good, doesn't have as much support or as much explosive support as Melgus does, but she's definitely still worth looking at, and uh, the deck is, is still pretty good. I have one on turn four with this deck before, so yeah, it's no slouch. And for this video and all other Alice Origin Cluster Starter Deck Upgrade Guides, um, it is going to be an Alice Origin Cluster Deck. That means no cards from New Valhalla, it's just going to be all Alice Origin Cluster, because, you know, that's honestly what I'm playing right now. It's honestly what is the most affordable and the most widely available. So if you're a new player, you're coming in, you're trying to look at, you know, how do I upgrade my Faria Starter Deck, I don't want you to have to go and buy, you know, a whole bunch of $20 cards to make it, you know, playable. So how this video is going to work is I'm going to do kind of like a normal deck tech, talk about all of the cards in the deck, why they're good, why you should be playing them, and then at the end I'm going to go over all of the cards that were cut from the starter deck and just kind of give some quick reasoning. So if you're just here for a deck tech, you got the deck tech, but if you want the upgrade guide you can kind of stick around till the end and get, you know, the upgrade guide. And before we get started I do want to give a quick shout out to Happy Little Hug Factory. Those folks over there support this channel and they are incredibly awesome. They have pre-orders for the next Force Will set, Alice Origin 2, on their site right now. They have the starter decks and booster boxes available. If you buy the starter decks with the booster boxes, you actually get a discount, which is really sweet. I have an affiliate link in the description down below with links to said products. And enough rambling. Let's get on with the deck. First up, we're going to talk about our ruler, Faria. On her ruler side here, she's a ruler little girl. She has the Stranger 10 mechanic, and all of the Alice Origin Cluster rulers have this mechanic. It just means that you start the game with an additional deck of 10 cards, and um, it's filled with Stranger Resonator cards. You cannot have more than two of any Stranger Resonator in your Stranger deck, and there are other mechanics to let you draw from that deck, you know, or just play directly and... Um, they, they, that's not part of your main deck. She has Judgment of Double Light and a Water. She has an Energize of a Light or a Water. And she says, whenever a Light Regalia enters the field under your control, choose one. If the Regalia is Excalibur, and for this deck, it's going to be Excalibur, choose up to two instead. You can choose a card from your Stranger deck at random and put it into your hand, or destroy target Rested Resonator, or draw a card, or you may pay zero to do Judgment until end of turn. That's actually quite good. Being able to play Excalibur and to, you know, draw a card and get a Stranger or just being able to, um, you know, J-Activate for uh, zero is quite good. And then on her uh, J-Ruler side, we have Faria. She's in at 1000-1000. She's a, you know, upgraded from a little girl to a seven king. She has Precision and she says, Enter. Choose a card from your Stranger deck at random and put it into the field, which is pretty powerful. You gotta just put, you know, a random one straight into the field. And we have some... We have some pretty spicy ones to do that with. And she has a God's Art called Breath of the Sacred Queen for a light and a water. This card gains 400-400, drain, and eternal until end of turn. Choose a card from your stranger deck at random and put it into your hand. That's quite good. We can actually win the game with Faria, just pumping her up and doing a lot of damage. She's actually, you know, in terms of beefiness, she's a little bit beefier than Melgus. So I mentioned that stranger deck, let's talk about it. This is the stranger deck, you know, 10 cards. We just have two of each here. We didn't opt for any like singleton or anything like that. First up, we have the twin sword of Water's Mercy. She's a 600-600 for a single water. Resonator, stranger, swordsman. Uh, quick cast, enter, put target resonator on top of its owner's deck. As you can tell, all of the stranger resonators are quite powerful. This is one of the starter deck cards. We are running two of them. Next we have um, Siegfried the Dragon Knight, uh, 700, 1000 for double light, Resonator Paladin. Flying, Barrier Fire, Barrier Darkness, which is pretty good against the Melgus deck. Enter, destroy target, Rested Resonator. Just keep in mind that you might have to choose your own Rested Resonators if your opponent does not have a legal target. So, um, you know, play this card with caution. It is also a starter deck card. Next up we have Rahab, the Emperor Dragon of Riptide. This is not a starter deck card. 1,000, 1,000 for triple water is a resonator dragon. Flying, enter, draw two cards. Just a really big, beefy beater that also refills your hand. We are running two of these. 
Next up, we have another non-starter deck card. This is Ishtar, the Great Goddess of Kindness. She's a 1,000-1,000 for double water and double light. Uh, she's a Resonator Goddess. Enter, put a non-stranger Resonator from your graveyard into the field. So you basically get to reanimate one of your Resonators. We're not having, you know, a ton of really high drop Resonators in this deck. So you're not going to be able to reanimate something huge. But you still get a free Resonator back. You know, being able to um, deactivate Faria and get this right off the top and then get, you know, like a Lamorak or something back is pretty good. You know, it's a lot of value there. And we do run two here. And then last but certainly not least, we have Arthur, the King of Knights. He's a 1,000-1,000 for double light and a water. He's a Resonator Knight of the Round Table with Precision First Strike. Other Knights of the Round Table you control gain Eternal, which is really good. It's kind of like Indestructible if you played Magic the Gathering. And it says, enter, you may search your deck for a Knight of the Round Table and put it into the field. Quite powerful. This is probably one of the best uh, Resonators, Strangers that we have. Next up, we have our Magic Stones. I really haven't changed the Magic Stones other than changing to my preferred artwork on the Magic Stone of Light Vapors. So if you buy the starter deck, the stones are the exact same. Four Magic Stone of Light Vapors, four uh, Ataractia's Memoria, and then just a Light Magic Stone and a Water Magic Stone. And like I said, I just picked the art that I like the best. Because I, you know, I really like these, uh, the Vingolf 3 artworks for the stones. And now we're going to start talking about the main deck. Kicking it off with our Regalia Excalibur. Uh, it is a two drop, a water and a light. It has mythic, which means you can only have one on the field at a time. It says, you know, specifically, if you control two or more entities with mythic that share a name, banish all but one of them. You know, kind of like legendary for magic. Uh, your J ruler gains plus 400, plus 400. Like I said, uh, Faria is going to be pretty beefy. And you can rest it to produce two wheels in any combination of light and or water. Plays this only to play God's Art, Strangers, or Swords Art. And you know what? We got all those. Definitely running a full playset of the Excalibur. And now we get to our Resonators. As you can see, it's a, it's a big chunk of the deck here. Uh, starting off with Percival, the Seeker of Holy Grail. This is kind of a Knight of the Round Table deck. She is a 200-200 for a single light. She's a Knight of the Round Table. She has Enter, reveal the top five cards of your deck. You may put a Regalia or Knight of the Round Table from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in any order. You can banish this card to prevent all damage that would be dealt to target J Ruler or Knight of the Round Table until end of turn. We run a full play set of her because card selection is fantastic. And, you know, we want to keep our deck pretty lean with low drops and being able to get Excalibur is also quite relevant. Next up, we have Aggravane, the Hard Hand. This is not a starter deck card, unlike Percival. Aggravane is a 400-400 for a single light. Uh, he is a Knight of the Round Table with Barrier Fire and Barrier Darkness. Once again, quite good against the Melgus deck. And you can pay a light to give another Resonator Barrier Darkness and Barrier Fire until end of turn. We run a full play set of him because he's just a good, efficient beater. Next up, we have one of the best cards in the deck, Lamorak the Third Knight. I think she looks like a Fire Emblem character, if you ask me, but, you know, I digress. She's a 600-600 for a Light and a Water. She's a Knight of the Round Table. This card gains plus 200, plus 200, and Drain as long as you control a Regalia. And Regalia you control gain Barrier, so she protects your Regalia. But she also, you know, becomes an 800-800 with Drain for only two. Yeah, quite powerful, and uh, we run a full playset of that as well. Next up, we have Gawain, the Knight of the Sun. This is one of the cards in the starter deck. I just kind of picked one of the versions that I have that, you know, looks a little bit better. This is a reprint from an older set. Um, Gawain is a 300-700 Knight of the Round Table for double light. He says, other Knight of the Round Table Resonators you control gain plus 200, plus 200. When this card attacks or blocks, rest target Resonator. We are only running two in the deck because um, his effect is pretty good, but it's also a little slow, and he's only a 300-700 or 300, 700. For only two, we can get a little bit better right there. And pumping our team isn't isn't that useful. It is, it's quite good, but uh, yeah, we're only running two of them. We can kind of search them up with you know Percival or something else. Uh, next up, we have Vivian. Vivian is actually quite good. One of the starter deck cards. We are running a full play set of her. She is a 600 600 uh, with flying for two, which is actually quite powerful. Um, one water and one light. She's a fairy, not a knight of the round table. However. Um, she says, Knight of the Round Tables in your hand, gain Quick Cast, which is really good. And she says, Enter, search your deck for a card named Avalon Illusionary Home of Knights, and put it onto the field, which is also quite good. If you already control an Avalon, you can search your deck for a card named Excalibur instead. Super powerful. You actually get a lot of value with this card. You know, it's, it's four will worth of card and only, you know, two cost. And, 
Not much else to say. Vivian is kind of like an all-star in this deck. Starting the game with Vivian in your hand is actually quite a big deal. Um, I've noticed that uh, I do a lot better if you get Vivian early. Um, so yeah, that, that's Vivian. This is Traveler in Wonderland. We're only running two of her. It is also a starter deck card. Uh, she is an 800-800 for double light and a water. She's a Wanderer with Quick Cast. Your J Ruler gains Barrier, so that's pretty good in protecting Faria. When she enters, you get a Rest target J Resonator, so that makes it so we can get a good attack in. And then she has an ability for zero. Choose a race. Resonators you control gain the chosen race until end of turn. Play this ability only once per turn. So we can choose Knights of the Round Table, so all of our Resonators gain the bonuses from our Knights of the Round Table synergies. And we're only running two of her because she's kind of slow and doesn't really synergize that well with the deck, but she's kind of cool. And then finally for the Resonators, we run Bedivere, the Restorer of Souls. This is a starter deck card. Um, I cut two of them because, once again, kind of slow and kind of niche, but still pretty good. And I did pick one of the versions that I have that I that I like quite a bit. So what does Bedivere do? He is a 700-700 three drop for double light and one of any. He's a knight of the round table with precision. Enter. You may remove target resonator with a thousand or more attack from the game, which is really powerful. But there's not a lot of really, really beefy stuff going on right now. And the ones that are, you kind of want to get it on their turn and not on your turn. But he's still really good. And he's still like a, a good way to, to clean up the table. If your playgroup is running a lot of really beefy thousand or more attack resonators, then uh, Bedivere gets a lot better. And finally, we have the rest of the deck. These are some additions and chants. First up is Bewildering Charm. This is not a starter deck card for a single water. We have a chant mage art with quick cast, so we cannot play this off of Excalibur. It is a mage art, not a sword art. However, it says choose one. Return target resonator to its owner's hand or draw a card. So it's pretty good. You can, you know, bounce a resonator to your opponent's hand when they're going to do something big, or you can bounce one so you can get an attack in, or just draw a card. We are running two of these. Uh, you could probably run four. I chose to run something else instead of this as removal, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. Most people will probably say that you should run four of these, but... Like I said, I kind of like what I've got going here. Next is Sacred Wave Blade. This is premium removal for this deck. Probably one of the best ones. It is a chant sword art with quick cast for one water and one light. It says remove target resonator or addition from the game. If this card was awakened, choose a card from your starter deck at random and put it into your hand with an awakening of a single light. So yeah, you can play this off of Excalibur. You can just rest Excalibur and then Sacred Wave Blade and remove a resonator from the game. So powerful. Also addition too, it hits additions. Yeah, this is a starter deck card and we are running all four because this card is super powerful. Next is Awakening of the Sacred Queen. This is another starter deck card. We are running three of them. So I, I did cut one, but I do think this card is a little underrated. I think it's actually quite good. Um, it's a quick cast chant sword art for two light and a water. It says, choose one, search your deck for a light regalia and put it onto the field or gain a thousand life draw card or rest target J resonator J resonators you control gain plus 400 plus 400 until end of turn this is how I won on turn four I was able to get a early J activate with Faria and then the next turn just followed up with awakening of the sacred queen they didn't really have anything I was able to smack my opponent's face for a ton of damage um, I do like awakening of the sacred queen and you can also get a lot of value of just searching your deck for Excalibur putting it onto the field and then getting those triggers on the Faria ruler side, you know, either drawing cards or getting uh, strangers into your hand. Um, yeah, I like this card quite a bit. Um, it's a little bit slow because it's a three drop, but I, I think it's definitely worth it in the deck. And then next we have Seal of Leneth. I do run three of these. This card is ridiculous. It's an incredibly powerful removal spell, probably one of the best in the entire game right now. And I chose to run these over an additional, um, you know, additional copies of that bounce spell. I mean, this bounce spell. I chose to run Seal of Leneth over Bewildering Charm. Though I think Bewildering Charm is still good enough to run. So what Seal of Leneth does, it is a one drop, single light will, addition, enter, remove target non-J ruler, non-Magic Stone entity your opponent controls from the game. When this card leaves the field, put that card from a removed area that was removed by this card into the field under its owner's control. So basically you get to temporarily remove something from the game until they are able to get rid of the Seal of Leneth. And for only a single light will, that is that is so powerful. The only downside is that it doesn't really have quick cast. But, I mean, who cares? You get to get rid of anything. Or even another addition. So you can get rid of uh, you know, your opponent's seal of Leneth to get whatever they Leneth back. Which I think is actually, it's actually pretty good. And this is not a starter deck card. But it's just, you know, just a common card. And then finally we have 
our two Avalon Illusionary Home of Knights. Um, I chose to run one of the older versions because the art is a little bit more full. Um, you know, it just it just looks nice. It just looks nice. So what this card does, it is a two drop, one of any, and a light. For an addition, Knights of the Round Table you control, gain plus 200, plus 200. That's about it. It's just kind of like a, a mass pump addition to all your knights. And being able to search it up for free with uh, Vivian, it's quite good. I do want to note, though, that you don't really want a whole lot of these in your hand because it's not a very interactive card. Especially if your opponent's really doing a good job of killing your resonators. This isn't going to do a whole lot for you. So that was the Faria deck tech. Before we end, I want to go over all the cards that I cut from this deck, from the starter deck. Starting off with this really cute knight, which, you know, kind of sad that I had to cut her, but she's not super good. Um, basically, she's just a 400-400 for a single light will. And she has an enter of look at the top card of your deck. If it's a knight of the round table, reveal it and put it in your hand. But that's so limited. You need a, a critical mass or you need something to be able to put cards back on top of your deck. And I found that it, it's just kind of not worth it. There were better things to put in here. Um, same kind of with Undyne. Pretty, pretty good stranger. 700-700 for two. Quick cast, flying, enter, return up to three target non-J resonator, non-magic stone entities to their owner's hand. It hits non-J resonator, so it doesn't hit resonators, which is it's kind of a deal breaker when we have some other, you know, better things we can play. This is the Awakening of the Sacred Queen. Like I said, we only cut one. Same with the Traveler in Wonderland. We cut two of them. I already kind of went over why we did that. Same with Avalon. Well, you can see, like, the art here, by the way, how I said that I like the art you know, a little bit more full on the older version of it. Yeah, I, I like this old templating a little bit more. Let you show off some of the some of the sweet art in the game. So yeah, we, we cut two of them. Um, same with Gawain. Once again, already talked about why we cut him. Uh, same with uh, Bedivere. You know, a lot of these ones I just picked, you know, arts that I liked better or foiling that I like better. Um, same with the Magic Stone of Light Vapors. And then finally, we have the White Wizard that I cut. Um... This card's actually pretty good, but it didn't really synergize with this deck, and I found myself, like, getting a white wizard and being like, man, I really wish this was, like, a Rahab. I wish this was just a big flying dragon that I could just draw some cards off of. But I would not blame you if you just put this in your stranger deck. I think white wizard's actually pretty good, and I think it actually is quite good with some cards that synergize with other rulers like Lenneth. And that's that. That is my Faria Alice Origin Cluster Starter Deck Upgrade Guide. I hope this was useful to someone out there. This deck was a lot of fun to build and a lot of fun to pilot. It's one of the least expensive of the decks because the cards that you need to purchase, you know, like the, the Bewildering Charm here, and let's find another one, the Lamorax. You know, these cards are quite good for the deck, but they're they're pretty inexpensive to purchase right now. Not like a Shock T or something like that. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I appreciate it quite a bit. And regardless of what you do, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time for some more card game content. See you later.